Hey folks, it's uh, T minus eight and counting on the artificial life creation challenge. Uh, lots of stuff to look at here. Let's uh, start with this. One thing I want to call your attention to is occasionally, so you see these orange flashes happening in various places, that's where uh, contact information is being signaled from the edge of the grid in to the center. And sometimes, I think there was one right here, especially from the very, yeah, there was one. <laughs> you see things that aren't, aren't actually real, uh, uh, that it's just a phantom of the signaling system. I think of the thing being itchy. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll watch this just for a little bit more. I let this simulation run uh, for two million eps, two million average events per site across the whole grid because I wanted to get a lot of interactions and, and make sure that these things weren't still smashing each other, fusing themselves together or getting stuck to each other. Uh, but, you know, when it starts going faster like this, I mean, it really starts looking very, I mean, to me, you know, pretty organic, except for the fact that it's a diamond. You could sort of imagine, uh, uh, like, looking at some pond scum in a microscope and seeing some of these things or something. Uh, uh, Anyway, so this is the main the main progress for this week. Uh, but <sighs> hello, hi. <laughs> It's T Tuesday 31 27. Here's where the goals for this time uh, did pretty well on most of them. Did not do loop operations. That will continue over to next time. That doesn't put us behind on the overall. I'm not even going to talk about the outline. I'm just going to do it. Uh, uh, so here's our overall outline spreadsheet that I made in July. That's actually still holding together pretty well. Uh, um, and here we are at T minus 8 HC3 sequencer. That's hard cell 3, the diamond grids sequencer and borders. What we have today is borders what we'll have next time is the HC3 sequencer and, and hopefully the rest of the countdown we will continue to count. Moving on. <clears throat> so why do we care so much about cell borders? Well, once again, here is the overall global view of what we're trying to do, going from a mother to grow, reorganize, copy the genetic information, split, and have a mother and a daughter that can do the same thing. And right there, at the very beginning, we're talking about uh, a discrete organism that has an edge that I drew, drew, drew a wall around. This is the cell wall. This is what we're trying to get done with the border uh, around the diamond matrix. So uh, let's take a quick minute uh, to, to just look at the simulator. Uh, uh, all right, I've got it set up here so that maybe we can sort of see what's going on. Uh, so where the heck is, all right, here we are. So HC3, that is the hard cell three. These, so those are the matrix. You can see three, three, three. Uh, they're each of them three apart, one, two, three, and so forth. But we got these MBs next to it. Those are the uh, membrane bases. And what they try to do at the edge of the uh, hard cell three matrix, we don't have, normally we have a complete two little two by two uh, units all over the place but at the edge we have three HC3s and no fourth one because that would be off the end so I call those broken pockets and the MB the membrane base they colonize the broken pockets that are supposed to be at the edge of the thing and they're looking out to see stuff that's going on and they're also looking out to see MSs which are the membrane sensors those are the distant early warning uh, uh, systems that look out further and in fact what we're seeing right here 
<coughs> in this, this is a, a replay, I've backed up the events. Uh, this uh, is about to have, in, in its event, just at the edge of its event window, can, can you see that? We've got the, this green outline showing how much an individual event can see, and it's fundamental to everything about the movable feast, is to understand the event window, that when one atom is having an event, that's what it can see and alter. So in this case, this uh, guy is a hat, can just barely see a membrane sensor from a different cell. Uh, and it can tell it's a different cell because this the sensor has a, a open door that says which direction it's looking in versus which direction it thinks is its own cell, and these differ. So when we go ahead and have an event here, boom. Now this event is starting to signal. It's signaling that there's a contact directly to the west. And if we let this thing keep going, that'll keep spreading on through. But that's the idea. I mean, so if we look at this, um, here well, we've got a, this HC3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's 12 sites away from the nearest HC3 of the other cell, but yet they have detection, they have contact, and in fact the other cell had already seen what's going on. So, the diamond cell membrane that goes around the outside, it does all of these things for us. I mean, number one, it, you know, it helps spatially isolate the inside of, of the diamond cell from the outside uh, to, to let each guy know. I mean, the, the HC3 atoms itself, I mean, they don't actually, they, they know which direction they're going based on the neighbors that look downhill. We've talked about that before. But if another uh, HC3 diamond grid comes too close, they can get confused. They can think, do I belong here or do I belong there? And having the membranes around it, having the layer defense in depth, uh, the final point there, this is defense in depth goes back. It's a military strategy of having, instead of having one absolutely firm line that you're going to hold forever, you have fallbacks and layered defenses. Got taken over by uh, computer security talks about defense in depth, uh, uh, which is you know, easier said than done when you're talking about computer security within a single computer. Defense in depth doesn't really work because as soon as you have a brief each of the uh, program RAM, the random access memory, uh, you can take over the whole RAM uh, like that. That's kind of the point of random access memory. But in the movable feast, in cellular automata, we have actual spatial locations and we can actually make certain amount of progress by saying, I control this much space. And then furthermore, don't even come within, you know, an, an 12 uh, sites of me, or I'm going to notice and I'm going to react. Now, they don't have a lot of ability to react except to run, but that's really important. So, provide early uh, warnings of outside threats, and didn't talk about it, but the membrane base and the membrane sensor are both sacrificial. Uh, we can just roll over, the, if the thing does get too close, those things will get put out of the way, and the membrane base not only re reacts by copying what the membrane sensor says, they also react if they don't see any membrane sensor, and in fact, that's what we saw at the very beginning of the opening clip that when the cells were first coming out there was all kinds of orange signaling going on and that's because the membrane sensor layer hadn't grown yet so the whole thing was feeling very itchy as it was scabbing up until it got running all right i did it <laughs> I, I took the the you know, Cold War, the, the dew line, the distant early warning line that was supposed to be like watching uh, Russia so that we'd see the missiles coming in. I understand from Wikipedia that it's not the dew line anymore. They've replaced it, but you know, hey, I'm a boomer. Uh, uh, and the idea is we have four levels of contact, you know, DEF CON, I'm mixing my metaphors. Uh, um, open, meaning I don't see anything. Sight, meaning the sensors have seen something, you know, just barely on the horizon. Uh, contact, meaning that we've seen something much closer that the uh, membrane base of seeing not just what the membrane sensor cells, but they see some problems directly, or the HC3 tail, the HC3 edge is seeing something, which is even worse. And then the worst case is damage, when we have actually a, an HC3 in the interior of the cell is seeing something that's supposed to be there. That's not completely implemented yet, but that's the worst case. So the root, when it's making a decision about what to do, will have a choice about, well, okay, I can see some sightings, but I'd rather get away from the damage, or whatever. And that's all, it seems, working. So, this is the title card. Uh, uh, cell defense in depth, in depth meaning layers. We Here we have our two giant uh, political powers, cell one and cell two. They've come in sighting distance of each other, and the reports are now flowing up back to the root for decisions to be made. 
Uh, uh, all right, moving on. Uh, debezelification. We, you know, this was the uh, sh clip I showed last time, the, the screenshot that had, you know, it looked, you know, you know. All right, there's a diamond grid, but because the T2 tiles uh, have these. Uh, uh, these bezels, these frames around them, these connectors for the inner tile connectors, there's a, a grid power light over here is the uh, tile power light, all of this stuff. That means the LCD in the middle is quite distant from the adjacent LCD of the tiles. And so I worked on that. Uh, uh, let's take a look at this. looks like a, a brick wall in the dark with stuff being projected on it but the stuff that's coming out of the wall <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't I didn't trim it any closer because there's enough variation from position to position this is the best I dared to go to The color rendition is also not great. Uh, a lot of that is due to the cheapness of the LCD panels I'm using. Uh, uh, may be able to fix this. This is already trying to do some color correction. Uh, you might have seen some uh, some itching going on there on the lower left uh, one. This is still running. Hopefully we'll have a, a longer one with stuff bouncing around uh, a lot later. All right, and so that's all using this FFmpeg program, uh, uh, which I think stands for fucking fast MPEG. Uh, uh, it doesn't, but uh, I wish it could. I mean, and, and this is this is stressing it pretty hard. You know, each one of those images is a separate image crop, which are then overlaid one at a time on the output thing. Uh, um, and, you know, the bottom line for me is it takes over an hour to process a day's worth of data, which is kind of a long time, but on the other hand, it's less than a day, so we can get this working. So that's that. Finally, <laughs> um, you know, Thanks so much for taking a look at these videos or this video being here now wherever you have managed to find this You know the t2 tile project is still super duper tiny But I think uh, the artificial life creation countdown is helping it's drawing in a few new people YouTube says that the previous uh, uh, Update uh, t minus nine is reaching a wider audience And so I thought maybe in the very end here I would spend a minute trying to just you know reset a little bit of the backstory and you know how I got to be doing this and you know just you know what's going on here now you know I could say you know I am a emeritus professor of computer science yada yada and I have done blah 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 and so forth but I thought instead I would take one minute and show you this hi I'm Dave Ackley. I'd like to present the results of some work. How can an organism learn during its lifetime, given only its own death as feedback? So organisms with good evaluation functions in their genes will tend to learn good things and will proliferate a source of reinforcement signals. Here's the data we obtained. This is an overview of the world. This diagram depicts the array of inputs that each agent receives. At about 600 time steps, he was quite lucky to survive an extended encounter with a carnivore. The result of the learning algorithm in this interaction was such that it corrected the genetic defect in the action network he was born with. Shortly thereafter, he produced the first of his four children. Of course, if you took a stable population of natural guys like this and stuck in a couple of those hand-designed guys, they'd take over in a couple of generations, wipe these guys out. I guess, I guess that's, that's life. Okay, uh, 1990, over 30 years ago. All right, and that is it. Uh, um, so the goals for next time, uh, we'll be back on August 30th, is to get loop operations demo. I mean, the, the, the demo here means, you know, we want it to be real. It's not just talking about it, not just thinking about it, but getting something working. Also want a hard cell three sequencer demo. We don't even really know what that is yet. Uh, we shall find out. And also, as always, have some fun. Uh, um, 
again, uh, I will pause here uh, at the end and get the render starting. I will then stay. Uh, we'll still be going live in the live stream until the top of the hour. In the meantime, thanks so much for checking this all out. I hope you're doing all right. I hope to see you next time.